Hey me magic super souls, welcome back to the channel if you are already a part of this community. Oh, I'm seeing pile one and pile two already and this one for pile three. Uh, welcome if you are new to the Moon Magic Tarot community and beautiful souls. Our readings today, we are asking which of the Ascended Masters is guiding you right now and why? We're going to be drawing a lot of cards and getting a lot of information for you. So, which of the Ascended Masters is guiding you right now and why? So, pile one, we have the Miriam. This is a sacred vision. Okay, so we have the Miriam. This is the card for pile one. I will read more about it when we get into the reading. We then have the Holy Spirit. Expect miracles. This is for pile two. Wow. Okay, and then we have for pile three, faith. So this is for pile three. Humanity and benevolence. Okay, so my beautiful souls, let's draw you some runes and some charms. We have, for pile one, the rune of strength, for pile two, the rune of journey, and for pile three, the rune of fertility. Okay, and your charm. Mm. One, oops, that's for two. That's for three. I'll hold these up actually and I'll put them onto a little counter so you can see them properly. I know people have said that is really, really helpful when we place the charms out. So pile one, you have um, the rune of strength. This is Uras. You also have a pair of glasses. Okay. So this is your rune and your charm. And this is sitting with the Miriam. Let's pop that there, cool. Okay, now, pile two, you have the Rune of Rado, Journey. You have the Holy Spirit, and you have this beautiful spiral charm as well. Okay, and for pile three, you have, as well as the Rune of Fertility, Ingers, you actually have a beautiful little fairy. Stunning little fairy. Okay, and this is sitting with faith, humanity and benevolence. Okay, so these are your three cards and we are looking at which ascended masters are walking with you right now, guiding you right now, and we're asking why, what is this about? Why are they with you right now? So beautiful souls, I'm going to leave the camera running for a few moments and give you that little bit of extra time. You can always press the pause button. Um, if you feel that you're drawn to more than one pile, then you know trust your intuition. I always think just go for it. Um, if you find you're kind of drawn to one card, but a different rune or a different charm, it may be that there's information in more than one of the piles for you. Take your time, trust your intuition, and if you feel that more than one pile is calling to you, check them out just one at a time. The timestamps are below. All of the cards that I'm using are listed as well below for anyone that's interested in those. And I will see you in the readings in just a moment. Pile one, welcome to your reading, beautiful souls. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining me. So, which Ascended Masters are guiding you right now? Now, the Miriam are um, 
they're twin flames they are they they come as one and they they come to heal so the card says choose to forgive in order to heal i think that will focus will it focus for you i think so um, choose to forgive in order to heal. See the light in all. Remember that love has no boundaries. Okay. Now you have the rune of Uruz, strength. You also have this pair of glasses. I feel like there may be a need. Um, they may be helping you to look through a different lens. But I'm going to draw from the same pack, actually, which is unusual for me to do this, but I'm going to draw from the same pack, um, from the Ascended Masters pack. We also have Mary Magdalene. There is an absolute connection between these two cards. So the Miriam are twin flame angels, and they it, it's actually said that they came to Mary Magdalene to help her to move through her grief, to be able to reconnect with Jesus after he had passed. This is their story. This is their message. This says, teacher awakens. You have something important to share. Follow the inner call. Don't let anything stop you. Okay. I think that they are here with you. The twin flame angels and Mary Magdalene are walking with you. Now, you may not think of Mary Magdalene as necessarily an ascended master, but if we think of ascended masters as being people who have played some key role in enabling some level of growth or awareness or, or something to happen on our sort of in our 3D planetary world that brings a message and guidance to humanity. Now, I think you have experienced some kind of a parting or a loss. And a parting, it could be a parting of the ways, something that broke your heart or something that felt devastating for some of you. However we look at it, something has happened and they are walking with you to help you to move through and beyond that, but also then to take something from your experience to help and to teach others. Looking through a different lens, maybe you help others to survive, I would venture to say, actually. Let me draw some more oracle cards for you. May we have oracle cards for my beautiful pile one, please. May we have additional information. Why? I think the why is for me quite clear. Do you know what? I'm feeling that there is a third from this pack as well. I'm asking why, although in many ways I think this is quite clear. But let's get as much information for you as we can today. More oracle cards again. May we ask from ah, lovely, there we go. We have two from that pack. I'm also going to draw from a roomy pack and we'll draw an image, both an image and also um some words, one of Rumi's poems as well. Do you know it's this one? It's literally flown off the top as I picked up as I picked up this pack. Okay. So let's see what else we are shown here in your oracle cards. So seeing beyond, absolutely, seeing beyond your grief, seeing beyond something, um, gaining a higher view. Wow, absolutely amazing. Oh, wow, well, and then being a storyteller. Oh, my goodness me, look at the key here. Beautiful souls, you have had an experience of something. I think that was genuinely very, very challenging. It was traumatic. It involved a loss. Now, that loss could have been a person. It could have been someone you love, but it could also have been a circumstance or something that you loved. Let me just press. Bear with me. I don't think that camera is quite focusing. And I hope that it is now. Yeah, I have bought a new camera, so I'm hoping that this is now. I know sometimes I've had immense difficulty with technology. Admittedly, we had a big Mercury retrograde period while that was all happening. But I think... Um, I'm hoping that the camera will focus well enough for you to really see the cards. Okay, so we now have the card of victim as well, absolutely. You you really did, I mean quite genuinely, I kind of want to say you were a victim to circumstances. I don't mean that in a victimhood way, I mean you are a survivor of circumstances. But basically what this card is telling me is that something happened that was completely out of your control. You had no choice in it, much as when someone passes away. We don't have any control over that. There's nothing we can do about it. Now, 
The reason that the Miriam are working with you, sacred vision, is to help you to recognise that part of your soul's journey is to tell your story, or indeed to tell the story of someone else in a way that is actually going to benefit others, help others to move through a place where they feel like they have no choice, that everything is being taken away from them. We also have Balancing Act and Wizard of Awareness. Okay, and then we have Quest. Yeah, this is your mission. This is actually why you came here. Now, I know that's going to sound very big in light of challenging, traumatic events. And I do think you have experienced some really, really, really big events over which you had no control whatsoever. How interesting. Let me read you your poem. Your poem is the poem of silence. Last night I became mad. Love saw me and said, I am here. Don't shout, don't wail, just be silent. I said, oh love, I fear, or what I fear is something else. Love said, there's nothing else, just be silent. This is about learning to be still. I think you've actually had to really, really accept, or you're having to come to terms with you. You've had an experience that has almost forced you to have to accept that the world is not in your control, that stuff happens. One of those really big testing experiences where stuff happened that you could do and you could do absolutely nothing about it. You came here at a level of soul to help others who find their lives tipped permanently out of balance. You are able to through sharing your story or sharing the story of someone else, you know, but or of circumstances. You've come here to come through something and to emerge and to come out the other side, to help people to see beyond something. To do that, you've had to see beyond it yourself. You understand that when life throws you a major curveball, it's unbelievably challenging to pick up the pieces. You know it because you've done it. You've been there, done that, bought, you know, bought the T-shirt. Truly, this was out of your control. It was not your fault. There was nothing you could do. You've probably gone through all of that stuff in your head, which is what we do, um, you know, when things happen, we question. You know, what did I do to deserve this? Why has this happened? It's like a real test of faith, actually. You know, and we range through our emotions with feeling, you know, absolutely defeated to feeling really mad and angry um, to just wanting to shout and scream, to want to retaliate against somebody. This is really, these are normal human emotions to also just getting to a place where we just have to be still and and we just have to know it at the profound depth that it is. And this is huge I mean it's just huge I need to say to you I don't know what you guys are feeling like but every hair on my body is you know standing on end I have goosebumps all over me the, the temperature in my room has dropped I feel like if I was to breathe you'd probably see my breath some of you have definitely lost people you've lost um, for some it is circumstances but there's a, a huge profound sense of challenge that you have been through you've had the strength and the courage to carry on where many would not so I am really wishing to honor you now you have a level of awareness that is more than many will ever achieve but you can now help people to handle their emotions. You can help people to come to terms with things. Some of you may become art therapists or writing therapists. You might help people to tell their stories. But this is the transformation. It's also, And this is why the Miriam and Mary Magdalene are walking with you. They are very, um, even though the Miriam are angels, they are... They're very human in their, what I would call their application as guided masters. They are very, very human um, in terms of the experiences that they help you to process. And they are coming to guide you to use your experiences to benefit others. I think you have a very valuable role to play. 
It's your quest, it's your purpose, it's why you're here. Let's draw your tarot cards and see what else we are shown. May we have guidance, perhaps perhaps information. Now, now I this is a reading that's going to reach many. So I think in many ways, you know, you're going to be at different what I would call ages and stages of processing your experience. But let's ask if we can get real guidance, real hands-on guidance and information to help you know how to proceed from here. How do you move forwards? Okay, so your first card, what a confirmation, the three of swords. You know, this is that scream, isn't it? Last night I became mad. Love saw me and said, I am here. Don't shout, don't wail, just be silent. I said, oh love, what I fear is something else. Love said, there's nothing else, just be silent. Gosh, I feel very emotional, beautiful souls. I really do. I think we are taking those three cards. I think we're taking this, 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 and that one too. Okay, what do we have here for you, Jan? Look at this. Do you know, this is remarkable, just, I mean, well, you know, I don't know why I'm saying that. I, every reading is remarkable. I'm constantly blown away. Um, we have three of swords, ten of swords, and the six of pentacles. Okay, now this is really, really interesting because the three of swords, we see your broken heart. Now, of all the ten of swords, of all the different tarot packs I use, I love this card because she's walking to something. She's not just walking away from something. She's walking to the light. She's being guided by these crows. This is such an affirmation of you being guided. I, I, I think the timing is really imminent for you. At whatever, whenever this happens, the timing is imminent for you to begin to use your experience, to write about your experiences or to tell people whether it is the key to your own healing which will then become the key to the healing of others or whether you are already feeling as though you are moving beyond this, you're seeing beyond it and the time is right now to write your story in a way that means you can share it to support others. But it is interesting because I think you will be actually kind of financially rewarded for this with the Six of Pentacles. And I think this is a lovely card of what I, I feel is both giving and receiving because it's a card of generosity. You know, the universe will reward you for your contribution and for everything you've experienced. And I think you can literally be physically, re, you know, uh, remunerate, remunerated, is that the right word? I think so. Um, for your experiences um, through the writing of this. And, you know, it will also benefit others. You're in, at the same time, you're both receiving, but you're, you're, also, you're also giving, you're assisting others. It's a completely reciprocal arrangement, really. What we also have here is the Ace of Cups, which I think is absolutely delightful. We have the Magician. Okay, we have the Moon. We have the Four of Pentacles. This is very interesting. This is very, there's very clear guidance coming through in these cards. Now, what I want to say to you, beautiful souls, is when you start to write something, um, if, if you're new to me, I was a psychotherapist for over 28 years. I had a full-blown practice, private practice. That's what I used to do. I've always read cards, and now I kind of mix the two, really, I suppose. But what I can say if I put on my therapist hat is when you start to write your story, it will open it back up again. You know, we have the moon here. You're going to revisit the emotions. Now, the purpose of revisiting those emotions isn't to hold on to the past, okay? It's not to hold on to the past at all. It is to revisit in order to express those feelings, to look through a different lens, to be able to rise above and see beyond, to help people, to refind love, to refind life again. You're going to help people who have had many ups and downs in their lives, as have you, you know. I think your cards are 
giving very clear advice, which is almost like in anticipation of this, saying, look, this is how this might be. I'm a great believer, and I used to actually say this to people in my therapy practice. Um, if we, let's say we had a conversation where we touched on something that was really deep and potentially, you know, quite painful for them. At the end of the session, I actually used to say to them, look, you know, I, I don't wish you to feel shit, but I just want to almost forewarn you that during the week before we meet again, because we have opened this up, you may find yourself experiencing some really challenging emotions. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have opened up and talked about it. It's simply that by bringing it to the surface, we are looking at this. It is now time for us to look at it. So I don't want you to feel shit, but there is the possibility you will feel heightened emotions. How you interpret that is really important. Because if you interpret it as a, oh, this feels awful, therefore I shouldn't have spoken about it. You know, you can batten down the hatches, kind of not return next week and decide that counselling isn't for you and go off. But what you contain inside you is still stuck within you, hurting you and screaming to get out. You know, screaming to be heard in order to be processed. So, so you know, the key here is really recognising if you feel emotional, it's a really healthy thing because you're bringing those emotions to the surface. And I used to also say to people, write, you know, people used to write to me during the week so they could put those feelings down, they would write them on a piece of paper, send them to me and know that I would hold those um, feelings safe until we met for our next session. Now, clearly I'm not able to offer that to you all. Um, if you have a therapist, you could be doing that. But in a way, I think this is almost talking about you being sort of your own gut. You've, you've got guides here to support you through the loss, the grief, the difficulty, the feelings and emotions that came with whatever it is you have experienced, whatever that trauma was. The spark of life is around you. So you will revisit this. It is not to hold on to. It's actually to activate and open your choices with the Seven of Cups. You are now in a very different position. You are in a position where you can manifest something really positive from this. You're manifesting something that will benefit and help you to heal and benefit others and help them to heal. And actually, you, you know, really it is opening you up to clearing the way so that you can bring... Um, love back into your life to take that risk again it may even be that some of you if you have lost someone have, have recently met someone and maybe you have wobbled well now is the time to explore those emotions and take that risk and write about you know maybe start journaling how difficult it is to begin to love again and your story will become something that can then be shared with others you know however this is for you your message is unbelievably clear I mean it just could not be clearer so pile one this is really guidance coming through the, the emotions you will feel emotional and that's okay it is healthy and the purpose is in many ways to share those emotions write about them writing about them is the key because in sharing those experiences, in expressing them, you shift to a place where you recognise and honour the choices that you have now and the learning that you have gained. And this is really about you getting back up um, into your world in a very different way and it almost being rewarded for having been through such a challenging time. And that is why the Miriam and Mary Magdalene are currently um, walking with you and guiding you. You have something important to share. Follow the inner call. Don't let anything stop you. They are holding you in so much love. It's untrue. Every step of the way, you are going to be supported, held, loved. Every step of the way. Any moment of indecision, just get still. Just remember they are there for you. Yes, love said there's nothing else. Just be silent. If you ever have a wobble, just get silent. Get silent, get still. And truly, I believe you will be shown exactly, um, maybe even a sacred vision that will assist you in knowing exactly what step to take next on your quest. Pile one, I am... Um, blown away to put it mildly 
Thank you so much for joining me today, beautiful souls. It is an absolute honour to be connected with you all. I am sending you so, so much love. Um, Pearl One, um, have a, a remarkable time um, emerging and growing and doing what you are doing. And I'm just sending you the biggest hug ever. Um, if you're new to the channel and you'd like to make sure you never miss a reading, don't forget to subscribe and press the little bell icons. That way you will hopefully get notified whenever I post anything new. Um, thank you so much, all of you, for being here, for liking, sharing, subscribing, for commenting. It's wonderful to hear what is happening in your worlds. And thank you for your love and your support of me and also your love and support of each other. Um, you are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, beautiful souls, and I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Hello, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading. I am going to draw another card from this pack. Um, do you know, I'm actually seeing two from this pack for you. I venture to say three. I was not expecting that. Wow. Okay. So beautiful souls. We're asking um, which ascended masters are guiding you and walking with you at this moment in time and why. You have the Holy Spirit. Expect miracles. Remember that only love is real. Miracles will occur naturally. Spirit has your back. Now something is unfolding around you with this charm. We have White Eagle, Ancestor Spirit. How interesting. Connect to your lineage. A family wound or pattern can be healed now. Okay, we had Lord Ganesh, infinite abundance, obstacles are being removed, spiritual support and connections are increasing. And then we have Lady Nada, heart awakening, awaken to acceptance and divine love, give and receive in balance. Okay, I can kind of see where your reading is going, but I'm going to draw more cards first. Let's draw your oracle cards and see what else we are shown. I'm seeing these two from this pack. I'm going to draw a chakra card. If any of these cards are kind of really speaking to you and singing to you beautiful souls, you can check them out. I've listed them all in the description box below. May we please ask? It's these two. And again, a third. Mm, very, very interesting. I'm going to also today draw a roomy card or two roomy cards. One is an image and the other is actually a poem for you. Let's see what else we are shown. May we please have a roomy poem for you. There we go. I'm going to go with both. I, I feel like just stuff is pouring in for you, like abundance is pouring in for you. Spirit has your back. Miracles will occur naturally. Pile two. You've been on a journey, like, and, and it's been a monumental journey. I think that you are one of the many songs, I suppose, that came here to, uh, to heal generational wounds, to heal generational trauma. And you are being so, so supported right now to complete that work. So it's done, it's dusted, it's over. You are free to move on, you're free to embrace life, you are free to give and receive in balance, obstacles are being removed, it's like spirit has your back. It's time for this journey to come to, or for that stage of the journey to come to an end. What do we have in your other cards? So we have a burst of magic, wow. We have spirit of gratitude, okay. Um, how can I move these along? Let me move your cards along a little bit. Wow. And look at the two lotus flowers coming through here for you. Isn't that amazing that both of these images have this lotus flower, this magic arriving? Okay, you are going to reach a point where you are really, really feeling grateful for the fact that something is, I want to say something's over. You persevered. You've got the card of perseverance. Look at that. You have the card of strength, sad embrace and part are coming apart. Okay. This is so making sense to me, actually, your reading. Let me put the rest of your cards out. Let's see what your roomy cards say. And then we'll kind of, well, we'll draw tarot cards as well, but we'll really get right into the, the 
nitty gritty of your reading. You have the card of quest. This is very interesting. This actually came out in pile one. If you were drawn to pile one, it may be relevant to you. <gasps> Can you believe this? Did you hear me? I, that took my breath away. You also have the, the poem of quest. Wow. I mean, I, I treat this as two separate packs of cards when I'm reading. This is, I think, this is possibly the first time the exact card has come out, the image with the poem as well. And laughter as well. How beautiful. I'm seeing something seriously turning around for you. Let me read you your poem. They said, we have already searched. It cannot be found. The old man bellowed. That which cannot be found, that is what I'm looking for. Show me your face. I am searching for the garden of paradise. Whisper in my ear. Your words, your sweet words are the remedy for all the world's bitterness. You are reaching a point of conclusion. The mission, the quest that you came here to do, my beautiful souls, that healing of a family wound, a family pattern that has been repeating itself is reaching its conclusion. You came here to do this work at a level of soul and the timing now which does not surprise me given all of the astrological happenings that are taking place. But the timing is completely right for you. You have persevered, you've had the strength to go on, you've made it happen. I mean, it, it's mind-blowing what you have achieved. But you are now reaching that point of conclusion. You know, it. there's a lot of sadness, there's a lot of... I mean, for some of you, you will part company literally with perhaps some people. Um, for others, largely you are parting company with those patterns. You may even part company with an aspect of yourself. What you will also find if any of you experienced what I would call soul loss from the trauma of the genetics of the family, the patterns within the family that you were born into, um, and you've been really processing this, this is the point when you rise again, your strength returns, the journey is coming to its point of completion, your heart is awakening, you are becoming whole again, spirit has your back, obstacles are being removed, expect miracles, I mean this is beautiful, we have then the poem of laughter, I was already born with a good sense of humour, but love has taught me to laugh in a different way. Now, like dawn, eager to embrace darkness, I laugh like a shell ab about to reveal its pearl. If you break me, I laugh. If you really know death, then learn from your teacher. Like death, laugh at the bubble of riches and fame. Laugh at this and also at that. How beautiful. I love this. Like a shell about to reveal its pearl. If you break me, I laugh because then the pearl emerges. You are reaching a point where all of your perseverance is paying off. I think that is magnificent. I can move this card down a little bit, I think, so we can see it. All of your perseverance is literally about to pay off. You have worked so hard, um, and I would imagine you've been through a lot, particularly in your childhood. Devastating stuff in your childhood, really. But, yeah, this is, this is the turning point. We are astrologically at a key turning point of evolution. You know, we talk about moving into the new age of Aquarius, we talk about the dawning of a new age. You know, that doesn't happen. It's not like we close one door, we open another. Um, you know, there's a lot of work to do, a lot of sifting through. But this, for you, is the turning point of why you came here for in this way. This was your quest, your mission, your purpose. I, I'm, God, I'm blown away by these readings. I really am. I mean, this is amazing. Let's draw your tarot cards. Can we have any additional advice or guidance? Anything that my pile two need to know? I mean, do they need to have information or support in any way to know how to complete this journey? Guidance and information, a sneaky peek to what's coming maybe? May we have further information, please? Let's see what we are shown. Okay, so we have the Four of Swords. Yeah, this time, and look at this, the Four of Swords and the Nine of Swords. 
Where shall I place these? Okay, I'm just going to place them along here. No wonder you have so many ascended masters' energies coming through and the pure Holy Spirit, which connects that which is above with that which is below. Four of swords, nine of swords. This is a point of completion. Yeah, look at this. You have the wheel of fortune. We're literally seeing the turning point here with the wheel. Everything that has been tying you in knots. Some of you really had to retreat. I think in literally in the context of your world. You, I'm just going to move these along because we have a lot of cards here. But we are seeing a turning point here. Yeah, look at that. It's the, the Wheel of Fortune sits on the card of Perseverance. You have done a lot of soul searching. You've processed a lot. You've really retreated into yourself. You've done the inner work. You've been through that dark night of the soul, to be honest, probably time and again. But wow, look at you. Look where you are now. This is the turning point. You're no longer going to be bound by these things. You know, if you have had experiences, I, I will say, of abuse, actually, that took place in your childhood, this is the point when you can look yourself in the mirror and no longer see elements of the past that haunt you. This is the turning point here. Expect miracles. You have the Knight of Pentacles and you have the Knight, wow, of Cups and you have the Ten of Pentacles. My goodness me, and you have the card of strength sitting on the card of strength. Can you believe that? Look at that, the wheel sitting on perseverance and the card of strength sitting on strength. What is coming into your world is the people who, they're probably already around you, but if they're not, they're going to be. Um, these are the people that resonate with you. These are what I would call your soul, fa this is your soul family. These are people who truly love you. These are people who give you the strength to continue, to give you the strength to rise up, to give you the strength. If any of you were drawn, I said, to pile one with quest to write your story, that could be relevant to some of you. To take your experiences into the world and make a difference with them. To receive abundance because of what you've been through. We have the Two of Swords. We have the Ace of Wands, the Three of Cups. Look at your community coming in again, the Hierophant and the Sun. Wow, wow, wow. This is an absolute turning point. I think you have genuine um, love and regard around you, the right people coming in, people who love you, who cherish you, who really love you for who you are. They recognise what you've been through. They admire you because of what you've been through. You're being seen, actually, in a way that you were never seen before. Or, I say that, you are beginning to realise that maybe the way you have seen yourself is not the way other people see you. You know, if you've looked at yourself, again, with this Eight of Swords here, if you've looked at yourself through the lens of your past, never felt that you were quite good enough, never felt that you could really be lovable, or, you know, never felt that you could fit because you've always been a square peg in a round hole, all the things that come from generational patterns that really, I mean, my goodness me, anyone who's processing those, is it's a biggie. Um... That time has passed where your perspectives of yourself are different and you are going to be seen differently, including potentially, I would add, by um, potentially the family you were born to. Yeah, this, this really is the turning point. It's the new beginning. Look at the people around you loving you with Three of Cups. This is love. It's community. It's celebration. And it's guided with the Hierophant. It's like your stairway, your connection with heaven, your connection with miracles. And the sun. 
beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I just want to bring these down so we can tune in with the um, the uh, ascended masters. Lord Ganesh, infinite abundance, obstacles are being removed, spiritual support and connections are increasing, spirit has your back, awaken to acceptance and divine love, give and receive in balance. If you are somebody who has continually been giving and giving and giving, because that was a pattern or that was a response to stuff that took place where you just tried harder and harder and harder and harder, now you don't need to do that anymore, those patterns no longer have to be followed. You are moving from a period of perseverance to a time when miracles awaken for you. Bursts of magic are around you. I actually think this is a really interesting card, the spirit of gratitude, because I kind of think you're going to get to a point where you feel kind of very grateful to be the person that you are. You'll recognise your own true value, your own self-worth, the strength of the person you have become. Whereas you might have been seen in the shadows, always walked along with a little bit of some darkening within your soul, this is changing. This is completely changing. I'm seeing you rise. Have a look at this burst of magic card. I don't know if this will focus properly, but can you see that actually the magic that's coming out of here is a figure coming out of the... Um, I think it may might focus. I hope so. You can see that this is actually a figure coming out of this beautiful opening lotus flower. You are emerging in the truth of who you are, the purity of who you are, the love of who you are. That is so beautiful, so, so beautiful. Remember, only love is real. Miracles occur naturally. I think your world is shifting. I think part of what is shifting it is, not only have you done the processing, but because you've done the processing, I think people are coming into your world. Now, whether that is um, colleagues or the right kind of, or, or like the spirit, your spiritual family, the family you, you choose rather than the family you were born to, your friends, the immediacy of the people around you, those who love you. It could also for some of you be partnership, someone who absolutely adores you. But either way, this is, this is magic. I mean, it is literally magic. The carrying of this family inheritance and the burdens of it are over and that is what you are being shown it's come to its completion you've done the work and well because actually as we move into the dawning of a new age it isn't one door closes another door opens it's a period of lots of turmoil lots of upheaval lots of sifting through the stuff that needs to be put to one side and let go of in order for us to emerge into a space where we live with higher levels of consciousness we recognize that we are both unique and individual and autonomous we have a part to play but that part to play is connected to the greater collective and i think this is now being cleared ready for you to hold um a very beautiful and amazing, very conscious role in the emergence of humanity as we move into the realisation of this new age. We're bang in the middle of the topsy-turviness of the chaos, and that's not over yet. But this for you is over, so that you then can step up and play a very different role in the next chapter of this journey of evolution. Wow. Wow. Pile two, wow, wow, and more wow. And if you were drawn to pile one, there may well be some significance there for you, actually. But I'm not going to say too much more. It's got to be there because it's feeling right for you. Beautiful souls, I am sending you so much love. Wow. Kind of hearing as well for some of you, um, seeing these roses. If you come across any white roses, this will this will be a message for some, but not for all. Um, if you have come across either white feathers or white roses, 
Um, white eagle is immediately around you. White, white eagle often is, is often seen as gifting a white rose um, and I'm also hearing or leaving a white feather. So if you come across white feathers or indeed a rose, there may be another flower, particularly a lotus flower that could be important to you. Um, roses and lotus flowers particularly uh, are very key to you at the moment in terms of the signs and the signals that you are being shown as affirmations. Um, beautiful souls, tons of love. Um, if you're new to the channel and you'd like to make sure you never miss a reading, if you subscribe and press the bell icon, the little bell icon, hopefully um, you'll know as soon as I upload any readings. And um, thank you so much, all of you, for liking and sharing. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much. Thank you for commenting, for all of you who give back through the super thanks in the comments. And thank you for commenting. It is amazing to hear what's happening in your worlds. And thank you for the love and support that you show me and indeed the love and support that you show each other. Beautiful souls, tons and tons of love. Pile three, welcome to your reading, beautiful souls. We're asking which ascended masters are walking with you and guiding you right now and why. You have faith, humanity and benevolence. Stay calm, trust the good in yourself and others. See the light in the world. This is your Significator card. Now I'm drawing from the very same pack. You have Isis, magic manifesting. Your dreams, visions and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused. Really hope very strongly to draw from more than one card from this pack. I think that is right for you, just these. Now, your oracle cards. Let's see what else we are showing. We'll draw your oracle cards first. We are asking which ascended masters are walking with you. I'm going to take this one as well. And that one too. And why? Now the cards, if you're interested in the cards, ooh, we've got two from this pack for you. If you're interested in any of the cards, I've listed them below in the description and I'll put them in a comment as well. You have this card. I'm also seeing this one for you too. Yeah, and that one. Mm, very exciting. Now I'm going to draw as well today, I've done this in the other readings too, a roomy card, two roomy cards. I'm drawing from uh, the images in this pack. I'm also drawing from the poems as well. So we'll draw you a poem too and see what we are shown. I love the roomy poems. I'm actually going to draw, it's that one actually for you. Okay, so Let's have a look and see what we have here. So Isis, magic is manifesting and you have this beautiful little fairy. I feel like nature spirits are around you, close encounters. This is interesting. Spirit of gratitude. Oh wow, look at this, beyond the ordinary. Wowza, something is really, really moving forwards or going to move forwards in your world. And Isis is working alongside you and indeed faith, very specifically to lift you, to keep your energy high. You're very, very, very sensitive at the moment because I think you're kind of basically, you're channeling, um, you're channeling information that you're putting into some kind of pathway or purpose. Now, impatience perseverance. I think the, that whatever it is you're working on, it's not a small project, okay? I think it's something that's quite big. And so it's going to take perseverance and however much you want it to just appear, <laughs> I think it's going to take time, okay? So really important to kind of hold your focus, okay? Your dreams, visions and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused. Isis is working with you to help you keep your focus. Because I think what happens as well is that you really are, um, you're moving, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, I sort of want to say becoming enlightened, um, actually, but you're elevating your consciousness, you're elevating your awareness. Now we've got protecting treasure, deep freeze, and encouragement. These are very interesting cards. I'm going to put impatience up there. I think we've got to find somewhere to put it. Kind of couldn't quite work out where it needed to go and perseverance. 
let's move these along and see what we're shown here. We have perspective and ripening. Okay, let's put those here. And these just here. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to read your poem. Ripening. The smog of my heart is longing to fly again. The cauldron that stirred all my childish notions has finished simmering. All you see inside is eternal love. I am ready now. Wow. Okay. There is something that you are creating and it's going to be beyond the ordinary. Now you're impatient, you want it to happen. I, I get that. <laughs> you really, really want it to happen. It's something you have held in your heart for forever. <laughs> this is almost like a childhood dream for some of you, okay? Whatever that will be for you. You need to have faith that it is coming and you need to be patient. I feel like it's going to be worth the wait. Just because it isn't right in front of you immediately, it doesn't mean it's not coming. And you are ready, okay? You are absolutely ready to receive this. I think what we're being shown here, and this is why Isis is walking with you, as is faith, you need to sort of, part of the learning in this is learning to trust. If you want something that goes way beyond the ordinary, then you may have to wait a little while for it to orchestrate. It's kind of like if you were looking for the love of your life with close encounters. If you're looking for the love of your life, then... It's kind of like the butterfly effect, you know, a butterfly flutters its wings, I don't know, I'm in the UK, a butterfly flutters its wings in New Zealand and that sets off a ripple effect that will reach the UK and something will happen here that will open a doorway. It, it's There's something bigger going on here. If you want something that's beyond the ordinary, then you may have to wait that little bit longer for it. Okay. But your dream is guarded, it's protected. And just because it feels like it's not happening, it doesn't mean it's not happening. I feel like there's some orchestrating going on. You're longing to fly again. Look at this. I think for some of you as well, there may be circumstances around you where you're feeling caged in. And it's almost as though you have a treasured dream, but you don't feel you're not there yet because it hasn't come to fruition. And so for some of you, this could be working on something, some major, major project, some major dream. And you're still very much bound in the daily um, you know, practicalities of making it happen and, and it hasn't taken off yet and you're feeling quite entrenched in, you know, the, the constant needing to attend to this and attend to that. There could be things that have been in the way and I think a part of you may be thinking, I don't know if this is ever going to happen, you know, is life always going to keep throwing me up stuff that I have to deal with and I'm never going to get there? You will get there. Shift your perspective. If something isn't happening immediately it doesn't mean it's not happening it's just not happening right now and it's not happening in front of your very eyes I think there's more to this actually we better draw cards and make some inquiries what is this about now with fertility this rune here Ingus sometimes it requires completion of beginnings which means that you may have to cross the t's and dot the i's in something while still holding faith, it may be those details you have to attend to. Um, also, with fertility, you have to fertilise the ground for your own deliverance. There may be some groundwork that you need to do. Impatience really sense. look, you know, we can't, you can reach for the stars, but you do need to do, you, you've still got to climb the ladder. I think we just need to draw your tarot cards and find out more about this.
With Close Encounters as well, I'm wondering, have you come quite close to feeling like you've manifested this? Or every time you get close to it, something happens and it feels as though it slips out of your fingers or it moves away or you come to something and you think, yeah, this is it. And then it doesn't quite, quite get there. What is this about? Could we have more information generally initially for pile three, please? In all of these cards, actually. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, so you have the Two of Wands and the Five of Swords and the Three of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles and the Wheel. Oh, wow. The Ten of Pentacles and Ten of Cups. Wow. You then have the Death. My goodness me. You've got the Death card and the Tower. I mean, you don't get bigger cards of transformation. Wow's a wow. Okay. This is mind-blowing, actually. I mean, really, really mind-blowing. Is that getting everything into, into our vision? I think it is. Okay, let's really focus in here. First of all, let's look at the Ascended Masters that you have with you. Now, Faith is the twin flame of Archangel Michael. She's the yeah, like the, the feminine opposite of his divine masculinity. And the energy she brings is about recognising that whatever has happened, I mean, in a way that you can revive your dreams, you can bring something to life, you can manifest something, you can see the good in yourself and others, you can hold the light, you can hold the vision, even in times of challenge or difficulty when you need to persevere. Now Isis, Isis actually brought back to life her twin flame, which I think was Osiris. So Isis is about being able to, helping you, the energy of Isis, the benevolence of Isis is about helping you to if you've had a dream that you almost lost sight of or you felt that it was so close but it never came or you feel trapped, it's never going to happen. Isis is here to activate your belief, your faith, your trust to help you to take the actions you need to be able to bring your visions and goals into reality and to keep focused. We've got the two of wands holding that focus. And yet here we have the five of swords and the three of swords, you know, cards of, you know, disappointment, feeling like it's never going to happen, feeling like, you know, maybe you made the wrong choice or you made the wrong decisions or, you know, retrospectively looking back and thinking, gosh, could I have done it differently? Lot, lots of that kind of... um the thinking patterns that, ironically enough, if we stay with them too long, they hold us back. Now, for some of you, this is a connection to people, to someone. So, but it won't be for everybody. For some, there's a you know a vision of something that you've wanted to bring in for yourself. For some of you, it literally is the whole picture. It's love. It's relationship. It's home. It's family. It's the job. It's the career. It's the whole package. For others, there'll be specifics could be close encounters and therefore could be love for some of you. Now you're being asked to step into a place of gratitude here. The turnaround is coming. I mean you've got the biggest biggest cards of transformation out of the entire tarot pack. Death and rebirth and the tower. So the old will crumble and the new will arrive. That is for sure. Old attitudes, old circumstances, old hurts can be laid to rest. And we see the wheel turning here. And we see the wheel turning in between the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. This is why I think for some of you, it's the whole package. It's money, career, finances, family, love, intimacy. It's the whole package. Now, this is going to massively transform and it will be beyond the ordinary. I love this, absolutely beyond the ordinary. I think you have felt previously that you've been close to this. And in many ways, you've probably experienced 
more than one disappointment along the way when you thought this was it or this was your lucky break or this was the time when it was going to fall into place. But what we're being shown is that now the wheel is turning and it may be because this is the right timing. Divine timing is involved now. It's the right time for you to actually move this forwards, to be freed from any limitations, going beyond the ordinary. I do think there is an element, though, of you needing to be patient and to hold your focus, hold, hold your dreams clearly, clearly in your mind. Don't be swayed by history or stuff that hasn't worked out. Don't be knocked off balance by anything like that. Let's get some more information. Let's ask, because I'm seeing the turning point. Could we ask for information about this turning point? Could we have clarification about how this turning point might arrive or when it might arrive? Could we please have information about this turning point? How and when, perhaps? Wow. Okay, so you've got... My goodness me, so you've got two, um, two sevens, you've got, oh, sorry, two sevens, you've got two, the six and the seven, my apologies. So you've got the six of wands, you've got seven of wands, you've then got the page of cups and then the ten of swords. Right, I think you have a very big dream, okay? I, I think for you, the bigger picture, and, and I'm not putting down anybody's the essence of anyone's dreams. Whatever whatever your dreams, they are yours. Do you know, I mean, I, I sort of feel we live in a very goal-orientated world. And I feel that what that means is that we often feel if we don't have big dreams, there's something like, you know, you want to be famous and have a massive house and a car, there's something somehow wrong with you. Look at that. Did you hear that noise my computer made? How fascinating. Something just popped up like that onto the screen. Ping. Um... I, I just think actually, I mean, if I think of my own dreams when I was younger, you know, my only dream was actually to have a family and raise my children. That's all I actually wanted. I wanted a quiet family life. That was my dream. I have bigger dreams now, but that's because my world has led me in a different direction. Um, but, you know, actually years ago, and I think that there was that was the best dream in the world. And I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to raise my children, to have a family and raise my children. And, you know, remarkable young people they are doing their own thing now. So my world, my dreams have shifted and changed. What I do feel, though, for you is I feel that there is potentially for some of you quite an ambitious dream. And again, there is nothing wrong with that either. You know, wrongs and there's no wrongs and rights. We're all different. It's our differences that are the source of humanity's greatest potential, where we follow what is right for us each. You know, whether that is like me years ago, just wanting to be, a, to be honest, a mum and have my kids, you know, versus people who want to go out and dream big and, I don't know, enter politics or become whatever you want to become. I think you do have a big ambition. And I think it's quite a big one. And that ambition could be the whole package. It could be having that family life. It could be having, you know, the career, the, the, the massive something. But I think it's big. This is suggesting that to go beyond the ordinary takes time. It isn't something that comes overnight. What I do see imminently is of you coming into the spotlight in some way. Okay. Some of you may have had almost an unconscious fear of being in the spotlight, actually. Because sometimes the very thing that drives us to be ambitious can be the very thing that also we've had to learn to protect ourselves from. So I'll give you an example. So if you're new to me and my channel, I, I was a psychotherapist for a long, long time before I kind of moved into this kind of work. Um, which is now really mainly what I do. 
as a therapist, I, you know, often people who are driven to do something are driven to do something because they've had really challenging circumstances. So like somebody who had a really rough childhood might with an absolute determination want to do really, really well in the world. And it's compensating for what they didn't have. And, you know, in a way, it's amazing because they're taking something that was really difficult and they're turning it into something that is mind-blowingly positive and very often helps many, many other people. So it's phenomenal. It's fabulous. There's nothing negative about it. Interestingly enough, though, what I will say is sometimes people who are also having that big ambition and that big, big dream can also have a fear of being really successful in case it's then taken away from them. So, for example, if you didn't have anything as a child, so your drive is to then compensate for that, and why not? But there's also a fear that if you do have something, it'll be taken away from you, because actually as a child, everything was taken away from you. And this is just a kind of an example, but I hope it illustrates what I'm saying. That, you know, I think there is something here about learning to own what you really want and not be affected by anybody else's attitudes towards you. There's something about you not being um, discouraged by anyone else's perspectives, learning to step up in your own right. Step into the limelight. Be you. Take an ownership of what you want. Take an ownership of the bigger picture. Why shouldn't you? This is almost like part of the learning here. Fertilise the ground for your own deliverance. Completion of beginnings. Letting go of anything within you that says, I don't deserve. This is only a dream and I can't actually have it. You're letting go. You're going to let go of so much in terms of the restrictions that your world has previously placed upon you or that you have previously experienced in life. Now, the Page of Cups is a pigs might fly card. It's dreams come true. I think an opportunity is imminent for you. When you step up into the limelight, you're seen. And Isis is part of um, both faith and Isis are walking with you, guiding you to help you to kind of regenerate for some of you something that was lacking when you were little or something that was taken away from you that you're now rebuilding in your own right and faith is helping you to remain on track and stay focused you are going beyond the ordinary and I think you know that your ambitions go beyond the ordinary and yes, there's an impatience. Why wouldn't there be? You know what you want. You've got that vision. But it does require groundwork as well. I think you're doing the groundwork. It's probably taken a lot longer than you thought it would. But that's cool. Every experience you've had along the way has helped you to develop resilience so that you can actually sit in that position of being in the spotlight and handle it. Because actually... It's, it's a biggie, you know, if you're in the spotlight, you know, I've often thought, you know, people who are, you know, kind of very famous, you know, and we off, you know, people, I've heard people sort of be having quite a negative attitude towards them for living in a big house behind a great big closed wall. But, you know, if they lived in an ordinary street like I do, you know, they'd have millions of people banging on their door on their doorstep, they'd have no privacy. So, you know, in a way, they, they have to develop really firm boundaries around themselves in order to then deliver the amazing stuff that they deliver you know actors who create the most incredible films that transform so many lives you know it's it's that kind of stuff or you know songwriters you know whatever you do but whatever you are doing when you bring it forth into the world and you're in the spotlight you will need some privacy around you and I think a lot of what has been happening is you've been developing resilience. You know, the perseverance has given you resilience and strength and actually increased your determination. And faith is walking with you. Isis is walking with you to really assist you in manifesting this in real terms. It's the whole package. I don't think it's one thing, although one thing will potentially lead to the whole package. It's all interwoven. You will leave the world behind in no uncertain terms. You know, your world is going to transform in every possible way. And it will be in alignment with your dreams and your wishes and your visions. So let's just get a few more cards just to find out a little bit more about 
any kind of timing indication around this King of Swords. Okay, this is an interesting card. The Hierophant. I'm seeing this card here. The Four of Swords. Okay. How fascinating. Mm, I'm kind of hearing when you were sleeping. I kind of feel as though the timing of this, I mean, admittedly, you know, this is a general reading, so it's going to reach many of you, but I feel that the timing is guided. I think it will almost happen. I think it will kind of happen overnight when you are sleeping. I, I think it'll be quite sudden. The key here is for you to stay focused and stay on track. You have the bat of transformation. You have the owl of vision, holding your vision, staying focused, letting the world transform, letting things emerge. I think as long as you are on track and focused, when the timing is right for that gateway to open for you, that stairway of success, it will. And I almost, and I think when it does, it will happen sort of almost overnight. It's like, I don't know if you're a musician and you've written some beautiful songs and you're continually posting them. And then suddenly one of them will go viral. And literally while you're sleeping, you'll wake up and you've kind of got a million followers. It, it's got that kind of flavor. Suddenly it's like, wow, here we are. Life will never be the same again, but it's everything you've dreamed of. Beautiful souls, this feels amazing and what you have are the guided masters the um ascended masters of faith and isis walking with you guiding you to support you in bringing this into fruition so that you you rise beyond the ordinary and i i actually do think it's life changing in every area of your life whatever it is that sparks this no part of your life will remain untouched by your success that is what i feel Pile three, I am blown away by your reading. I've been blown away by all the readings today. I mean, just, it's phenomenal. They they are, the information in them is, is extraordinary and, and in very different ways. Pile three, thank you for being here. It's a great honour to read for you. Don't forget um, our lovely, humble community. When you reach your point of major success, <laughs> it'll be really lovely just to hear from you, just to give us the thumbs up and say, hey, do you remember that reading? Here I am now. Um, that would be awesome. Beautiful souls. Um, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the little bell icon if you'd like to make sure you never miss a reading. Thank you all of you who are already subscribed. Thank you for liking, sharing. Um, it is wonderful to be connected with you all. Um, a true, true blessing. And um, yeah, thank you for your comments as well. It's wonderful to hear how you're doing. And thank you all of you who give back through the super thanks in the comments. And especially thank you for your love and support of me and for your love and support of one another. Tons of love, Pile 3. I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon for another reading.